Today we've got a pretty cool integral from my favorite integral suggester for the channel. And so our goal is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of the hyperbolic secant of 2 pi x over x squared plus 1. And we're actually going to use a tool that we developed in a previous video, and that previous video is called Amazing Techniques for Uncovering This Series. And, well, it writes the secant x as the following infinite sum. So notice we've got 4 pi out front, and then we've got this crazy minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1, over 2n plus 1 squared minus 4x squared. Oh, and I just realized that this should have been a pi in the denominator here. So I'm going to write this as 4 over pi. Okay, so we got that fixed. And we're going to do this using the technique of generalization. And what I mean by that is we're going to look at a slightly more general integral and then look at a specific value of that. So let's set i of alpha equal to the integral from 0 up to infinity of the hyperbolic secant of pi times x over 2 alpha, and this is all over x squared plus 1 dx. And notice in this setting, our goal is going to be i evaluated at 1 quarter. That's what would build this thing right here. So now what I'd like to do is simply look at the numerator of this integral for just a second in order to maybe write it with the tool that we, like I said before, developed in our previous video. So there we've got this hyperbolic secant of pi x over 2 alpha. And a nice thing is the hyperbolic secant is related to the normal secant with a multiplication by i of the argument. So what I mean by that, this hyperbolic secant is the normal secant of pi times i times x all over 2 times alpha in this case. Now that may seem like a little bit of a problem, but check it out. We're only squaring x in this expansion of secant, so that means we'll be squaring the i, which the only thing that that will do is change this minus to a plus. There's also some other little simplification or maybe rewriting that happens inside of the sum as well. But what do we get? So we're going to get 4 over pi, and then the sum, n is going to go from 0 to infinity. So none of that's really changing. And then we've got this minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1 in the numerator. Again, none of that's changing either. And then we're going to have in the denominator, 2n plus 1 quantity squared plus an x over alpha quantity squared. So something like that. So now let's insert that in our integral i of alpha. So let's see, we're going to have 4 alpha squared over pi. So where does that 4 alpha squared over pi come from? Well, it comes from this alpha, which is in the denominator of the denominator. So I'm going to Essentially, you multiply the numerator and the denominator by alpha squared. That's going to give me an alpha squared up here. And then it's going to change what we've got there inside of that sum, or the denominator of that sum, if you will. Okay, so now we've got the sum. n is going from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the n. And then we have 2n plus 1. And now we'll have the integral from 0 up to infinity of, so it's going to be dx, and then we have x squared plus 1 times, let's see, it's going to be x squared plus 2n plus 1 times alpha all squared. So we've got something that looks like that. And observe that this integral that we've got here inside of our sum, which I've underlined in magenta, is an integral of a rational function. And notice it's really just in the denominator, we've got x squared plus 1, kind of the prototypical irreducible quadratic, and then something fairly similar to x squared plus 1. It's x squared plus something squared. So what I'd like to do to simplify that is to do a partial fraction decomposition. And I'm going to do it a little bit, uh, maybe not more generally, but I'm going to rewrite some of the terms here. So let's see, I'm going to take this 1 over x squared plus 1 and then multiply it by x squared plus b squared. So 
Observe that that's exactly what we have here, but b is equal to 2 and plus 1 times alpha. It's just going to be easier to work with this b squared for this part. Okay, so this is going to decompose as a over x squared plus 1 plus b over x squared plus b squared. Like I said for, before, with b equals 2n plus 1 times alpha. Now you might say, well, since I've got an x squared in the denominator of each of those, I need linear terms in the numerator. But in this case, you actually don't. And that's because you can think about each of these two terms as really being linear polynomials in the variable x squared. That's because there are no x's that really show up anywhere alone. They only show up as x squared. Okay, so anyway, now what we'll do is multiply through to clear denominators. That's going to give me a times x squared plus b squared, and then plus b times x squared plus 1 equals 1, because that's my numerator over there. But now I'll collect the um, coefficients of x squared and the constants. That's going to give me a times little b squared plus capital B equals 1. Those are my constant terms. And then a plus b equals 0. Okay. Now I can go ahead and subtract these two. And that's going to leave me a times b squared minus 1 equals 1. But that's going to tell me that a is equal to 1 over b squared minus 1. And then b, you can check pretty easily that b is going to be the negative of a. Well, I guess it just follows from the second equation down here. So that's going to be negative 1 over b squared minus 1. And so to write these out, this a is going to be 1 over, let's see, we have 2n plus 1 times alpha, all squared. So I'll just square each of those individually and then minus 1, and then, well, b is similar. I won't rewrite that. Okay, so now I'm going to arrive at the top of the next board with i alpha equals this expansion, where I've replaced this with its partial fraction decomposition. Okay, before we jump back in, make sure to like the video, and if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider subscribing as well. Okay, so here's where we left off. So we've got our i of alpha is 4 alpha squared over pi, and then we've got this sum. Notice outside of the integral, we've got a minus 1 to the n times 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 times alpha all squared minus 1. And then we've got our integral of those two parts. And now these two parts are fairly routine in terms of their integration. And well, I'll maybe leave that little calculation as a homework. But the integration of the 1 over x squared part, since we've got the inverse tangent there, that's really just going to give us the inverse tangent of infinity, or really the infinite limit of the inverse tangent, which is pi over 2. And then, well, we're going to have essentially the same thing for the next part, but we'll have it multiplied by a constant, given the fact that we've got this 2n plus 1 times alpha all squared in there. And in fact, what we get for this is, well, let's see, it's going to be pi over 2 times 2n plus 1 times alpha. So the next thing that we'll do is put those together. So I've got a bunch of stuff to copy. So I've got my 4 alpha squared over pi, and then my sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. I have minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1, and then I'm going to factor this. Notice it's a difference of squares. So I can factor it as 2n plus 1 times alpha minus 1, and then also 2n plus 1 times alpha plus 1. Okay, so again, that's from that bit right there. And then that's all going to be multiplied by what we get from putting those two terms together. And putting those two terms together, you can see that you'll get 2n plus 1 times alpha minus 1 in the numerator, and we'll have 2 times... 2n plus 1 times alpha in the denominator. Okay, great. So now let's observe that we get some really nice simplification. So notice that this 2n plus 1 times alpha minus 1 will cancel this one that's appearing in the numerator. And then this 
thing right here will cancel this. I guess the alpha doesn't get canceled, but we can cancel this alpha right there. And then also maybe this two will cancel this four down to a two. And let's see, will anything else cancel? Well, actually, yeah, this pi will get canceled as well because we forgot to include that. So let's see, we can cancel this pi with this pi. Okay, so I think we're in pretty good shape now. Now I'm gonna do one last thing. I'm gonna pull an alpha out from this term and cancel the alpha that we have in the numerator there. That just leaves us with a two in the numerator. And then we have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n over, notice this is gonna be two n plus one plus one over alpha. After doing that division by alpha, but let's observe that we can write that using an integral. So notice that's the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n, and then that reciprocal can be written as the integral from zero to one of t to the two n plus one over alpha dt. Because simply what we're doing there is increasing the exponent by one and dividing by the new exponent, that gives us that division by the new exponent. And then when we evaluate at the endpoints, we clearly, we just get this thing right here. Okay, but now we can sum that together and using a standard geometric series, that's gonna give us two, and then the integral from zero to one of t to the one over alpha over one plus t squared dt. And that's because we can think of this as a geometric series where the common ratio is minus t squared, and the starting term is t to the one over alpha. Okay, so let's keep in mind that is our i alpha, and then what we'll do is evaluate it at a quarter and we'll be done. Okay, so this is where we are so far, and now we're essentially done. Because notice our integral up here, which we called i, is equal to i evaluated at a quarter, which is gonna be two, and then the integral from zero to one of t to the fourth power over one plus t squared dt. But now what I'll do is I'll take this t to the fourth and I wanna write this as t to the fourth minus one plus one. But then I'll take this t to the fourth minus one and write it as t squared plus one times t squared minus one but then we can cancel out the t squared plus one. And that's gonna leave us the following. So we'll have two integral from zero to one of t squared minus one. That's from canceling the t squared plus one. And then let's see, after that plus one over t squared plus one dt. And the one over comes from this term right here. But now we can take the antiderivative of both of these fairly easily. So we've got a two, and then we'll have x cubed over three minus t, or sorry, I should say t cubed over three minus t, plus the inverse tangent of t, then we're evaluating that from zero to one. So notice evaluating all of that stuff at zero will simply give us zero. And then evaluating it at one, let's see, we'll have a third minus one, that's, that's gonna give us minus two thirds, multiplied by two gives us minus four thirds, and then evaluating arctan at one will give us pi over four multiplied by two, well, pi over two. So in the end, we have pi over two minus four thirds as our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.